Hallelujah. Throughout all of the praise today, I believe that they were also our confession of faith, and for each of us, I believe that God will pour um, and fill our cups daily. The message through which I'd like to share grace today is entitled, People Who Conduct with Wisdom and Speak Appropriately. People Who Conduct with Wisdom and Speak Appropriately. And the scripture reading comes from Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6. Our country, although it may seem peaceful on the surface right now, in reality, there has been an ideological war between free democracy and communist socialism for about one century now. And free democracy was the founding ideology of our country, which was established through President Rising Man. And it is the strong root that has allowed our country to grow into this proud Republic of Korea today. However, the communist ideology entered our country even before it was founded. And even today, it continues to cause various problems to our country. Now, from external issues with communist countries, including North Korea, to internal issues within South Korea involving factions that follow communism. Each system is actively moving in all directions to seize control. Now, most representative is the politics run by the president and the members of the National Assembly, numerous parties, the economy, which affects both domestic and international affairs and arts and culture, such as movie and music. So in other words, in this country of South Korea where we are, everywhere and in everything, we are in the midst of an ideological war. So basically, we're living in the middle of a battleground. There's a saying, It means, he who touches pitch shall be defiled therewith. And just like the saying, if we do not discern what we should touch in the midst of this war, we may unknowingly be tainted by incorrect ideologies. Today, through the main text and the great faith of President Rising Man, I'd like to examine how we, as citizens of this nation, should live with what kind of mindset. First, we must conduct with wisdom and make the most of the opportunity. Conduct with wisdom. In verse 5 of today's scripture reading, it says, conduct with wisdom toward outsiders. And the term outsiders in verse 5 refers to those who do not believe in God. It refers to people outside the church, but also broadly it refers to everybody who we encounter. And also the word conduct, conduct yourselves. This is a compound word, peri, which means about, concerning, around, and pateo, which means to tread or trample on. So together, peri pateo means to walk together. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, then, means to walk with the word, walk with the wisdom that God gives in according with the principles of life that's based on the word. Wherever we go, whoever we meet, we must think, speak, and act based on the principles and methods of life based on the word. We need to reflect whether we're living like this or not. And when we walk according to the word, it will eventually result in us making the most of the opportunity. Now, this expression, making the most of the opportunity, was a commercial expression in the Hellenistic times when the merchants would seize opportunities in the marketplace. So this is referring to seizing opportunities promptly and for the saints as well, within our given time, we should strive to seize opportunities that's allowed to us and utilize them in a timely manner. 
in order to use time without wasting it and to use it in conducting with God's wisdom, we also need insight. When we strive to live according to the word, I believe we will receive such wisdom and opportunities. And such was the founding president of our country and a great man of faith, President Rhee Seng Man. When he was young, he grew up learning Confucianism and also Buddhism. That was the environment he grew up in. But as he entered the Peche school, that's when he learned about free democracy. And there was a moment where he demonstrated that belief that he had in free democracy, which was when he cut off the top knot of his hair. He believed that when the people can judge wisely and learn, free democracy can take root. And he came to that realization when he met God. President Ri met God while he was in Sodemun prison, formerly Hansong prison, where he was imprisoned for five years and seven months. And it was at a point when he was just waiting to die with a yoke that was 10 kilograms heavy over his neck. But he met a missionary. And that became uh, the Bible that he received became everything to him while he was just waiting to uh, receive the death penalty. And as he read and prayed, he remembered what he learned at the Peje school, that the missionaries prayed at the school um, saying that he will receive salvation. So he started to pray at the brink of death. God save my soul. God save this nation. All that he had on the verge of death was his own life and the Bible. And this confession was made in true repentance and faith. And he returned to God while he was holding on to this last um, weak thread that he had. In the book Youth Recent Man's Autobiography, it records in detail the process of how Re met God and realized true peace and a new life through prayers that burst out in times of despair where he felt like the world was coming to an end. And thus, relying on the help of the Holy Spirit, he ignited an even stronger determination for education aimed at true freedom. And in 1904, he wrote the book, The Spirit of Independence. And moreover, he received special permission to establish and operate a school and a library within the prison and dedicated himself to the education of prisoners as well. And now seeing his efforts, the American missionaries were deeply moved and generously supported him. This book, um, called The Spirit of Independence, sharply analyzed the international situation at the time and changed the fate of the nation. And it also became a foundation for promoting democratic independence. And now it is still highly praised as a spiritual guidebook for the modernization in Korea. In the conclusion of this book, President Rhee says, for our nation to rise from where it fell, for sprouts to bud from where it rotted, unless our foundation is in this religion of Christianity, we would not truly gain anything, even if we were to communicate with the entire world. So this religion, Christianity, must be the foundation for all things. We must forget about our sake and become people who work for the sake of others. Only then can we serve our country with one heart and become equal with countries such as the UK and the US. President Ri, looking at how this country was at a dead end in all parts, President Rhee still shook off all the impossibilities and put hope in the freedom that was given by Christ. 
He believed that the source of free democracy, which is true freedom, was in the word. This belief that he had turned many of the prisoners and the prison gatekeepers to Christ. Then, for us saints who believe, what can we do? Like President Ri, who presented a vision of hope, even in despair, we must also look to the future with eyes of hope. And as we live with the eyes of faith, Um, with the given circumstances and people around us, I believe that God will provide opportunities as well as His grace and strength at the right time. By doing so, all, um, through insignificant individuals like you and I, I believe that the kingdom of God will expand daily as we walk with great faith. Second, Let your speech always be seasoned with salt. Let your speech always be seasoned with salt. The Bible says, let your speech always be with grace. And when it says your speech, this is referring to the language used by the saints. There is a saying that words are the sounds of the heart. And when we look at Luke 6, verse 45, it also says that people speak what fills their hearts. To always dwell in the grace of God, our hearts must be full of His Word. We must always be with the Word. When we always remember the Word, we don't distance ourselves from the Word. and hold on to the word, that is when we can truly dwell in the grace. And through that word, we can convey the word of life that can move others and transform others. And then the Bible says, as though seasoned with salt. Now this salt, when we look at Matthew 5, verse 13, salt prevents contamination. In Ezekiel 16, verse 4, Salt purifies what has become dirty. And in Leviticus 2, verse 13, it says, Salt must be added to offerings dedicated to God in order to make them holy. And as such, the words of the saints must be able to prevent contamination. The salt, um, our words must purify what has become dirty. dirty and filthy and we must be able to um, add holiness to everything in order for them to be offered to God and just as the salt makes holy the offerings given to God the words of the saints should also fulfill their role in the world but not just whenever we need to but always ceaselessly without stopping Now especially, we have begun a one-year project called Reading is Living. If you have not started yet, please join us so that through those times, our lives will become the Word itself, that we will live out the Word. Just as President r e e read the Bible over and over again in the Hansong prison, through this Reading is Living project, may we also read the Bible, read the History of Redemption series over and over again. In doing so, just like it says in Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 through 9, the word that we read, that we chew, and that we intake, will be demonstrated through our words, our actions, and our life. In Deuteronomy 6, verses 6 through 9, it says, These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. Your heart. We must focus all of our will on our hearts. 
Verse 7 says, You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. to your children as well. Wherever we are, at home or outside, whoever we meet, whatever we do, we must powerfully preach this word. And in verse 8, it says, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. Our hand, meaning our actions, must also be guided by the word. And verse 8 continues, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. Our intellect, our thoughts, must also be centered on the Word. And then verse 9, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In our families and if in our coming in and going out, let us believe that they will all be guided by God. So in Ephesians 5 verse 3, it says, But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you. Like this verse, as we refrain from speaking useless or impure words, and when we use gracious language, we will know how we should respond to each person. To each person, to everyone who we encounter, God will let us know how we should respond. When we speak appropriate language, we can also speak appropriate words that benefit anybody at any time. In other words, we must prepare our words and prepare our actions with the word, arm them with the word in order to fully handle the mission of spreading the word of redemptive history. And that was the kind of life that President Rhee lived. Oliver, a university professor who served as Rhee's aide, said half of Rhee's meditations were prayers. And Rhee's wife, the First Lady Francesca, wrote in her diary that President Rhee prays even when he walks. And like this, President Rhee was always near God, with God, always conversing with God. And that is how he was able to confess joy and gratitude in all circumstances. When he was in prison, corpses piled up because of um, cholera. But even in those times, he devoted himself to cleaning up the corpses for other people. And for those who survived, he um, spread the word of salvation and gave them hope. And President Rhee said, I am overjoyed because I have come upon this opportunity that I have survived and I'm able to teach this blessed word. And he was not proud even during those situations. He said it was only possible because God gave the strength that was allowed to him as his beloved child. And also he thanked God for his grace. that he came to this realization and if and he believed that even from a mustard seed branches will sprout out so that the birds will be able to uh, rest underneath those branches so truly relived a life of uh, illuminating the word or the world and taking on the mission of the salt On July 28, 1954, Rhee was the first Korean ever to stand at the podium of the U.S. Congress and deliver a speech. And at the time, he shook the hearts of the U.S. government and the American people. And it's very well known that he received standing ovations 33 times. He, he said, I express deep gratitude to the American mothers from the bottom of my heart. 
Thank you for sending your children, your husbands, and brothers to us when we were in a gloomy situation. I pray that God will cherish the souls of the soldiers of both Korea and the U.S. He spoke these words of peace, but at times he spoke words of a good fight, saying communists are horrifying forces that turn anyone who is conciliatory into a slave. And the only way for all of the free people of this entire world to live is to not surrender to the forces of evil. And he said, let's take courage and rise up to defend our freedom. Through this speech, the U.S. accepted South Korea's request for military aid and economic aid of $700 million. And that is how South Korea was able to be reconstructed, even in the ruins after the Korean War. And even afterwards, President Rhee continued to resolve many external problems through his anti-communism and skillful diplomacy. Walter Robertson, who was the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, recorded, in short, he is arguing for a fight against communism. If all our allied nations had the spirit of Rhee, the world would be less noisy. As such, through his words and actions, President Rhee carried out the mission as the salt for everyone he met. As the president, as the military leader during war, as a diplomat, and at times as an education leader, he, through evangelizing, giving thanks, being joyful, doing service, dedication, positive thinking, faith and patriotism, he was filled with these and also had a consciousness of the mission to love the nation and people. And he had the gift of having good insights and he was able to present visions. So all of these leaves that were shown through his life, the source was the gospel of Jesus, the word that he encountered. So as you and I, may we also be rooted only in the word with words and actions like the salt. And may we also become green trees with abundant leaves as well. In doing so, wherever we go, whoever we meet, through the Holy Spirit, may we all become the soldiers of the word who have victory. The verse that was most frequently quoted by President Rhee was Galatians 5 verse 1. Let us read. Galatians 5 verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Amen. President Ri realized that the word of true freedom, uh, the word was true freedom. Uh, I'm sorry. President Ri realized and understood the word of true freedom and sought to establish South Korea as a kingdom of God. And just as the mighty hand of God was with him, I believe that we will also be allowed great power through a close communion with the word. Now, the, 2020, the 22nd general elections is just around the corner this year. At this time, as we are facing a war in a different way than President Rhee's times, we must pray for uh, this country to stand firmly as a free democracy rooted in the word. Let us pray for the election of the members of the National Assembly who have faith like recent men and pray for the president and the people for them to turn to or return to God. Let us hope that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And wherever we go, may you and I be filled with words and actions that perform our role as the salt. 
In doing so, I believe that by the great and mighty arm of God, we as individuals, our families, our churches, our country, and all the nations of the world will be transformed into nations of true freedom that is ruled by God only. Let's pray together. Our Father God, who rules over all the universe and all of mankind today on January 11th, 2024, on this one precious day, we, have, we thank you for leading us to give worship to you together, seeking for true freedom. Today, through the grace that you have given to us, although we are weak, when you allow us great faith, may all impossibilities become possible. We believe that. Please allow that kind of faith to each and every one of us. For us as individuals, our families, all of the problems that our church is facing, may they all be resolved in a way where we are all led to the kingdom of God. Please allow that for us. The days, the months that are given to us, may we not waste them at all. but may we be able to walk according to your word. Please allow that wisdom and insight. And wherever we are, whatever we do, at school or at work, whoever we meet, may we be able to move their hearts through the Holy Spirit. And doing so, may the times where your will is consummated be uh, fulfilled sooner. And in the 5th district, t a e h y u n g s a m The daughter, uh, I'm sorry, the son of uh, an eldress in Fifth District, and there are many other saints who are fighting against diseases and illnesses. Although they may are, they may be in dis, uh, situations of despair, as they entrust everything onto you, we ask that you will allow them great faith, that they will overcome all of the diseases and be liberated from them. May they have a strong and courageous heart until that day. And for all of the families in the world, toward the free, uh, true freedom of the body and of the spirit, believing that will happen, we thank you and pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.